Hello guys, welcome to Level Chain Channel. My name is Claudio Fonseca. I'm a real Boeing 777 pilot and today we are going to talk about the load and trim uh, sheet. That is because the next step in our training is uh, the FMC performance entry procedure and we should start the performance entry procedure after the loading and trim sheet is on board. So that's why I want you to understand what is the load and trim sheet and uh, how the things are done in order to prepare this load and trim sheet, okay? So the load and trim sheet uh, used to be um, a very big paper like this. This is the load and message and trim sheet for a Boeing 777 uh, freighter. Uh, for the passenger airplane, it's pretty much the same. So what it does is usually you start with the basic operational weight of the airplane and then you're going to add uh, your uh, cargo load and your passenger load and your uh, fuel uh, on this sheet and it will give you uh, the weight uh, for the airplane and this weight must be inside certain limits and everything that is loaded in the airplane must be inside some certain inside some certain limits uh, to keep the airplane uh, in the certified center of gravity limits as well. Nowadays, everything is done automatically by a computer, and the pilots do not receive this load sheet anymore. Uh, instead, they receive an extract of this uh, load and trim sheet just with some figures, just with some numbers that they add to the FMC. OK, so that's how it works nowadays. Um, if you are following this um, training from the beginning, you also know that on the preliminary pre-flight procedure, there was a point that I told you uh, that the captain must review the few requirements for the flight and fill the dispatch papers. This is just after uh, calculating maximum takeoff weight and uh, landing dispatch, okay? Um, as I told you on this video as well about the preliminary pre-flight procedure, uh, you don't have enough data uh, to simulate this kind of information, okay? Uh, and that's why I realized it would be interesting for me to show you these uh, papers and I also um, give you the option to download uh, this uh, this document uh, through the uh, video uh, description below so you can download this document and you can adjust this document uh, to simulate your own flights okay so uh, not only the um, flight plan generated by SimBrief but what I'm going to show you today uh, is the um, dispatch released and the load sheet uh, for a normal flight so this is another paper that we receive together with the flight plan and this paper says on the top here that is the flight dispatch release and this paper uh, the pilots they have to fill uh, based on the flight plan and based on the latest information from the company that sometimes updates for example our estimated zero fuel weight so the pilots uh, when they see this paper um, they make sure they have the correct flight at the correct date and the date is 20 September 2021. Uh, they also confirm the origin, the destination, the type of the aircraft and the registration. Then they start filling uh, the time that they are filling this procedure. So they enter here the time. For example, um, 8 Zulu, 7 Zulu or 10 Zulu, whatever is the time that they are filling this paper. Then they have space to add the amount of uh, people inside the cockpit, the amount of people that it will be inside the cockpit for takeoff and uh, landing. So this usually is the pilots. Usually two pilots, if the flight is a little longer, maybe three pilots. If uh, it's a long haul flight, maybe four pilots. And then uh, the number of uh, cabin crew or the number of people in the in the cabin jump seats. Okay, 
because this information uh, the company doesn't really know or better the flight dispatch doesn't really know uh, how many uh, pilots you have for each flight okay um, then the pilots have to feel the regulated or restricted zero fuel weight this only changes in case you have any defect in the airplane so usually what it comes here is the maximum zero fuel weight and then the pilots they will feel the uh, regulated or restricted takeoff weight this regulated or restricted takeoff weight comes from this maximum takeoff weight that we calculate during the preliminary pre-flight procedure. That's why we calculate this weight before uh, filling the dispatch papers. So here uh, we were going to enter that number for the regulated or restricted takeoff weight. Then we have a couple of um, figures here and I'm going to do uh, like uh, this. So we have some uh, fuel weight estimate values and we have also some weight estimate values all of these it's coming from the flight plan so if you sum here and if you check here our ramp fuel is 20.8 tons so actually is 2711 that's the ramp fuel and then we have a taxi fuel of 635 the 635 it's also here and then we have a takeoff uh, fuel of 20076 this is 20076 and we have a trip fuel of uh, 9253 and this is 9253 the same thing with the weights zero fuel weight of 210 so zero fuel weight of 200 sorry uh, the zero fuel weight is already marked here I'm going to highlight again zero fuel weight 210 and then we have a takeoff weight of uh, 230,076, so 230,076. And we have a landing weight, estimated landing weight of 22823. 22823 is here. It's just a copy of this Vegas. Now the pilots, they are going to revise uh, this fuel. Uh, they will think about the weather. They will think about the flight itself. They will think about the uh, ATC restrictions or they are going even to uh, revise the fuel uh, based on the latest zero fuel weight that the company informed them. Uh, to do this based on the weight, we have on the flight plan information here that if the zero fuel weight changes plus one ton, it burn plus two kilos of fuel. If the zero fuel weight changes minus a thousand, kilos that means one ton it burn minus 31 kilos so we have to adjust our fuel based on these figures let's say that the zero fuel weight now is 220 so this is 10,000 um, extra on the weight so we need to, to take this 2 times 10 20 kilos and we have to adjust the weight by 20 kilos or if it's 200 we will take 10 tons less so 10 times uh, 31 will be 310 kilos less of fuel. As well, if we don't follow our flight plan, which is supposed to be 330, and we go one level below, we are going to burn uh, plus 143 kilos. So based on all of this information, based on the weather, based on the pilot experience, they are going to start uh, filling this paper. And I'm going to uh, fill this paper with you. The last thing at the end, the pilots, they include the final fuel required. Uh, this is just a copy uh, of the final fuel here from what uh, they use for the revised ramp weight. Okay, so we go to the next page now and I'm going to start filling this uh, with you for our flight. Everything it's already filled and it's in the red uh, It's in red color for you to understand. So I filled the dispatch paper at 0620 Zulu and We are supposed to have two pilots in the cockpit and then a cabin crew in the cabin The regulated or restricted zero fuel weight is the maximum zero fuel weight to 237682 
and the restricted or regulated takeoff weight is 351534. We don't have any new information from the company, so our zero fuel weight is still 210, so the revised so far is not the final one, it's not the actual, but just the revised so far is 210. So we don't have anything to add for the weight, but as this is a flight where we are going to perform some uh, instruction, so this is a training flight, uh, the captain and the first officer, they decide, in this case, I decide that instead of 20.8 uh, tons of fuel, we were going to carry 23 tons of fuel. Uh, the taxi weight, uh, I use the flight plan weight, so I'm expecting to uh, burn 600 kilos. I'm not that precise as the flight plan, let's say 635, uh, okay? Everything is rounded up or down uh, by the pilots at this point. Uh, because basically it says that our taxi time is 20 minutes, we are going to spend 635 kilos, so in this case I think it's just less than 20, so I use 600 kilos for the taxi, as my estimate for the taxi. And then 23 tons minus 600 kilos gives me a take-off fuel of 22 tons and 400, okay? And then... Also, this trip fuel, instead of uh, 9,253, I just rounded up to 9,300, okay? And then what I did is I uh, used the revised zero fuel weight, 210, plus our revised takeoff fuel, and we have a revised takeoff weight of 232,400. And then 232,400 minus... 9,300 strip fuel, uh, we have a uh, revised estimating landing weight of 223,100, okay? And just to confirm, we require 23 tons of fuel uh, to be loaded in this airplane today, okay? So that is the end of the flight dispatch release by the pilots, okay? It's very easy, uh, just the time, number of uh, pilots and cabin crew, the restricted uh, zero fuel weight, regulated takeoff weight as well, and then the amount of fuel you want, the amount of fuel you're expecting to use for taxi, and then you write the amount uh, of uh, takeoff fuel you have, and you adjust as well the trip fuel as you think it's going to be, and then you have the revised zero fuel weight plus takeoff weight, the revised takeoff weight minus the trip fuel, the revised landing weight, and just to confirm, to make it clear, 23 tons of fuel is what you need. So the engineer will look for this uh, figure here uh, to uh, refill your airplane. Okay? So once you have all this information, you already start all your flight preparations. They are, the pilots uh, are already doing their work. The cabin crew is doing their work uh, as well. Um, the um, cargo is being loaded now. Uh, the passengers are boarding the airplane as well, and at some point they finish loading the cargo. As you can see, we still have a couple of passengers to come, but it's almost done. And at this point, you receive um, something that we call uh, the final load sheet. Okay, uh, so that is the final load sheet. So instead of a big paper full of numbers, what we receive is just an extract of all of this with a few numbers, okay? So this is how the final load sheet looks like, and we are going to go through every information here as well. So it says this is a load sheet, the type is final, and the addition is one, okay? Uh, maybe uh, after this uh, something happens, something change, one, one um, uh, extra passenger or one passenger that was not found in the airport and then you have to go with one less passenger and all those things. So uh, you might have edition 2, 3, 4 or whatever. In this case we have edition number 1, the same flight data, KLM 5 Charlie Foxtrot on the 20, 20 September 21. 
This is the time that this edition one was finished, 7.15. The same flight from Paris to Milan is a 777 and this is the registration. And then here it comes the first information that uh, we give the company on the dispatch release, 2 and 10. So this 2 and 10 is the same numbers that we give the company here, 2 and 10. Then uh, the company uh, will inform us the actual zero fuel weight. So after they finish everything, they realize that instead of 210 tons, they have uh, uh, 209,963 kilos. Just 47 kilos less than 210, so it was very accurate in the beginning, but that's the actual one, okay? So the actual is 209,963. And we always have here on the right side the information for the maximum uh, zero fuel weight, which is 237682. This information is also coming. Okay, uh, let's do it as maximum. But this information is also coming from what uh, we give the company here, uh, 237682. Then in the sequence, uh, we have the takeoff weight. The takeoff weight, 22,400, is also what we inform the company here, 22,400. That's the takeoff weight. And they just uh, have a number here for what was planned in the beginning, 276. Then we have the information for the takeoff weight. The takeoff weight in this case is just uh, 209,963 plus 22,400 gives a takeoff weight of 232,363. That's our actual takeoff weight. Again, we have here the maximum takeoff weight, which is 351,534, which also comes from this paper 351,534. Then later on, uh, we have our trip fuel, and the trip fuel comes from the paper that we give the company, 9,300, okay? Also, the company informs us what it was planned. It was planned instead of 9,300, it was planned 9,253. Then we have our uh, landing weight, 223063, which is basically our takeoff weight minus our trip fuel, 2 Two three zero six three, and we have here uh, the information for the maximum landing, which is two five one two nine zero for this airplane. Okay, uh, just uh, one observation here on our preliminary pre-flight procedure, we calculated as well the landing dispatch. So in this case, the landing dispatch uh, it doesn't match. The maximum landing weight of 251290 of the airplane, uh, we have to give them uh, this information as well, but we give this information uh, in a different way. Instead of giving them uh, the maximum landing weight, we actually, uh, we, um, we just uh, restrict our maximum takeoff weight. That's why here it is RTOW 351534. I will give you one example to make it uh, clear. Uh, the maximum landing weight for this airplane is 251290. But let's say when we calculate the landing dispatch, the actual uh, maximum landing weight for us today would be 240 tons. Okay? So, how we do this? We go here, we check what is our trip fuel, 9,300, and we add then 9.3, which will come to a value of 249.3, and we add this as maximum takeoff weight. So we make sure the airplane will not be loaded with more than this. Because we know our maximum landing weight, we know how much we are going to spend on the flight, and then this 
decimal 300 it will come here okay so then we will be limiting our takeoff based on our landing weight okay that's why and how they know that this might be different but the structural doesn't change okay just for you to understand uh, why we don't have a field here to enter our restricted landing weight or something like that because when we are restricted by the landing we already take into consideration when we are calculating the takeoff weight okay uh, then we have two information uh, here the first information is about the zero fuel weight CG 21 sorry 28.1 percent and the takeoff weight CG which is the most important for us 28.8 percent later on we have information about passenger so we have four passenger in the first class 25 in business class and 190 in the economy class a total of 219 uh, passengers then we have the load in cargo compartments so this weight it's included a forward cargo hold of 10,963 and aft cargo hold of uh, 9,337 kilos and in the bulk 2,138 kilos. Uh, I will explain uh, for you this underload 27,719 by zero fuel weight just in a second. We just go down and some information for our flight the dry operating weight so the basic operating weight uh, all the numbers they started uh, from the airplane uh, without any passenger or cargo or fuel and this weight was 168 sorry 168 uh, 419 kilos then we have the information about NOTOC this is notice to captain if we have a paper about notice to captain that will tell us about live animals or dangerous uh, goods that we are carrying on board we would have the information here as yes how we use this well this uh, load sheet final is a document that we must have on board before every flight okay uh, in the other hand uh, no talk you might have you may not have so it depends okay so as this is always on board this load sheet will give you the clue if you are supposed to have a no talk on board yes or no if it's no no issues if it's yes you are supposed to have a no talk with you so if you don't have a no talk by this time uh, we usually we call the ground agents and we ask about the no talk because something needs to be informed to the pilots and we still don't have this information okay and then at the end usually it comes uh, with a message that who prepare this no talk in this case it was prepared by the dispatch in the uh, charles de go airport okay the last thing i want you to understand is this underload 27719 by zero fuel weight so to explain you i create this load sheet again and i want you to understand now that uh, we have to do a couple of calculations so our calculation are always like this our maximum zero fuel weight in this case 237682 our maximum takeoff weight 351534 our maximum landing weight 251290 minus the actual one so the actual for the zero fuel weight is 209963 for the takeoff weight 232363 and for the landing weight 232 okay so we always take the maximum minus the actual and we have some figures in this case 27719 119171 and 28227 so the lowest of these three values they come down here okay so this is how much we are under load and it's informed by uh, 
which number we are using in this case is the zero fill weight. So the lowest number is 27,719 and it's the zero fill weight. So that means we are under low 27,719 kilos by zero fill weight. That means if this airplane was 27,719 kilos heavier than it is now, we were going to be just inside all the limits. If we had any weight more than this one, we would be outside uh, one of the limits. So this is just an information for the pilots of uh, how far away from the limits they are and or how much fuel they can carry. Okay, uh, let's say uh, last minute information comes uh, with uh, different weather information for a long flight and we might need uh, some fuel uh, for holding on arrival. So we know we can carry up to 27,719 tons of fuel. Of course, we are not carrying that much, um, but sometimes this underload may be as low as zero. So when it's zero, it means we cannot carry any extra fuel and we are uh, on the limit, just on the limit. Usually when the underload is zero, it's for long flights when uh, we take off at the maximum takeoff weight, okay? It's very rare we have a flight that is limited by, uh, that we are landing close uh, by the landing weight, so it's very rare to have a flight limited by this, but it happens uh, much more often than the takeoff weight and the normal is to be restricted by the zero fuel weight k237682 like in this flight but note from the zero fuel weight to the landing weight uh, in this case is just more than 500 kilos okay so if you were burning 500 kilo less for this flight maybe our limited would be the landing weight as short as is the flight the limit might be the landing weight in normal flights, usually the limits, they are the zero fuel weight. And in long flights, uh, usually the limit is the takeoff weight. Okay. Just for you to understand uh, this, this line here under load 27719 by zero fuel weight. Okay. So uh, this is then our uh, final load sheet. Uh, the last thing I want you to know. I left it to the end because it's the information that uh, we need for the continuation of our training is that the information that we need to insert on the FMC, it comes between these asterisks here, okay, here and here. So the information that we need for the FMC is the actual zero fuel weight and the takeoff CG okay that's why we have this asterisk here to make it very clear that the information we need for the FMC is inside uh, let's say these boxes okay uh, guys I hope you like it this video I hope you understand how it works now all the process of deciding the fuel sending this kind of uh, fuel figures to the company and then the company uh, giving you back uh, the load and trim sheet that used to be as big as this, full of information, and nowadays is just uh, something like this. Just a few numbers, and what we really need to pay attention is the zero fuel weight and the takeoff weight. Of course, I will show you how to deal with this load sheet on board, uh, what is really necessary for the flight on the next uh, video when we talk about the FMC performance entry procedure. Guys, thank you so much. Please, if you like or if you learn something new with this video, uh, hit the like button. If you can, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have the opportunity, also become a member of this channel. You will see uh, some videos ahead of the ordinary public and please share the channel, share the video and share that knowledge with your friends. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.